Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Um, we got a great topic. Today we're going to teach you all about statin induced myopathy. If you look, um, statin, especially Lipitor, is one of the drug, uh, the number one prescribing drug in the world. Okay, so we're going to look at statin induced myopathy. Again, my name is Pramil Charyat. I work as a program director, internal medicine residency program, and transitional residency program, and I'm also director of research. And I hold two assistant professorship and uh, two major universities. So let's get into our topic. Right? What are statin? This is a class of medication used to lower serum cholesterol, okay? Now, facts about statins, like uh, why are we giving this talk? Um, there's like 100 million statin prescriptions per year. If you look at Lipitor, is one of the brand name, the highest selling drug in the world. Um, at least 1.5 million reports, some kind of muscle related illness. Myositis, we'll, re we'll talk about a little bit the definition. 1.2 per 10,000 person years. Um, there was a recent study looked at the muscle related side effects by 60% of the people who are the former users and 25% of the people are the current users, okay? Six to times high risk with the concomitant fibrase to decrease uh, cholesterol level. Now, definitions, uh, myalgia. So when we talk about myalgia, only like a muscle discomfort, okay? So the muscle's not actually breaking down. So normal creatine kinase enzyme level in the blood is gonna be normal. Uh, myopathy is called muscle weakness. And um, in that thing, you could have elevated CK or you may not have elevated CK, okay? And the third one is myositis. There is muscle inflammation and weakness, and then you got elevated creatine kinase also. Myonecrosis, the other term you need to know, this is like the more serious um, problems. You got severe elevation in the creatine kinase, and then you can have the muscle symptoms also. Now, pathophysiology, like how does it, I mean, how does it cause this much damage? And through main pathways we need to understand is impaired synthesis of cholesterol, impaired synthesis of coenzyme Q10, and impaired synthesis of isoprenoid. So let's start with the statin, like impaired synthesis. What does it do? It decreases the, you know, the cholesterol level. But, you know, is it a good thing? Sometimes, I mean, you need cholesterol for like a lot of different pathways, for the membrane stability, decrease there, the decreased precursors for steroid, vitamin D, and bile acid. So when you decrease cholesterol, all of this kind of affected, membrane is going to be affected, and then um, damage is going to be the muscles, okay? And then also statin, there's two types of statin. There's lipophilic and hydrophilic, and the lipophilic is are more permeable to muscle cells, so they can go into the muscles and can cause like a lot of side effects. Now, hydrophilic is a less permeable. They don't penetrate into the muscle that much, so less toxic, remember that, okay? So we have this nice diagram, lipophilic, which one is lipophilic simvastatin, atrovastatin, and lovastatin are lipophilic, so they have more um, <clears throat> risk associated with it, and the hydrophilic statins like pravastatin, rovastatin, and flovastatin. Also remember, when you increase the dose, the side effects of the muscle side effects can go up. And then the next pathophysiology, inhibition of the coenzyme Q10. Compromise function of the mitochondrial respiratory chain, impair high energy production in the skeletal muscle, it can lead to myopathy. And then the next one is when you, I mean, the uh, statins actually work on the mechanism inhibition of the HMG CoA reductase, which decreases the interme inter intermediate metabolism, promote dyspronylation, and kind of promote the apoptosis of the muscle death. Okay, uh, another thing we also need to like, you know, statin, um, in addition to that, they can interact with the so many drugs. So just be careful when you take, uh, when you take statin, you have to worry about the other drug interaction. Mainly, uh, you know, we need to know atorvastatin, lovastatin, and simvastatin, and uh, Servistatin and all of them go through the liver and there's an enzyme called a cytochrome 4, 450 and then that breaking down and the active metabolize and get rid of from the body. Okay, so any of this drug, it can inhibit um, the cytochrome P450. Okay, what is going to do? So that means 
all the uh, levels in the atrovastatin, lovastatin, and simvastatin, and cerevastatin can go up because that if the enzyme is inhibited, some of the drug can go and inhibit this cytochrome P450. Which one? Macrolide, it's common like erythromycin, and then you, the fungal, antifungal medication, HIV protease inhibitors, HIV medication, and then we can have amiodarone, as a common drug we usually use, and also <clears throat> the grapefruit juice also can be like affected by the cytochrome 450, okay? So just remember that. Um, so what part of, I mean, what kind of people are at risk for statin-induced uh, muscle problem? If they are female, advanced age, if you have low BMI, uh, diabetes, kidney or liver disease, alcohol, vigorous exercise, concomitant use of other fibrates, low vitamin D, D level, again, higher intensity of statin also. If you increase the dose, then the um, complications kind of go up. Clinical presentation, how do they present it? Usually like a muscle pain, then muscle inflammation, um, muscle weakness, rhabdomyolysis, because you got all this uh, breaking down of the muscles, increased CK, they go to the kidney, you can shut it down. And then, what are the other symptoms? Proximal muscle weakness. You can have nocturnal pain, muscle pain worse with exercise. That's why when you are like a vigorous, like a military type exerciser, be careful when you take this drug, okay? Um, so labs, which labs you need to check creatinine, any of this uh, enzyme, muscle, okay, muscle breakdown enzymes, so which are like creatinine kinase, LDH, aldolase, all of this is going to be increased. And always check the TSH because thyroid problem and also can cause muscle breakdown. So you don't want to get confused. You want to make sure it's not thyroid. So it's a good idea to check TSH also. EMG, you have myopathic changes in the proximal muscles. And the nerve conduction study is usually normal because it affects the muscle, not the nerves. Muscle biopsies and non-specific. Uh, I mean, if you're doing, you can see necrosis, degeneration, regeneration of fibers and the phagocytic infiltration, lipid fill vacuoles. And so what do you do? So you find out, and this is what, like, what's the next step? How do you treat? There's some, always like when you have like, um, uh, when you have a problem or like a disease, you always, the first thing you want to do is like, you know, how to risk stratify. So there's a risk stratification model called SAMS CI score. You can just download from the internet and then you calculate, um, you know, I just kind of put, they have like so many questions, kind of put it in. Then you can find out, uh, you, they get you some numbers, okay? So if the SAM score is between two to four, it's very unlikely you can have, um, uh, the your muscle related problem is due to statin, okay? But you still can discontinue statin, you can watch it, evaluate it for mainly thing when you have the SAM score is like a two to four, um, you know, think about the other causes. We can stop it and re-challenge you with the same dose. When it's 5 to 8 and 9 to 1 and it's higher, then you have to be really, um, you know, serious about this may be most likely. If it is especially 9 to, 9 to 11, SAM CI score, you can pretty much say, you know, this is probably like, um, you know, statin related, okay? So anytime between 5 to 8, 9 to 1, you stop the statin, right? Evaluate the drug interaction or wait for the symptoms to go away and then you restart. Give a challenge with the same dose or decreased dosage, okay? Always check for uh, TSH and vitamin D level. So studies have shown that you have low vitamin D level, the compli I mean, the muscle-related complications are higher. So if you have low vitamin D, make sure you replace it. Okay, wait for resolution of the symptom, re-challenge with the same dose, and then if still not working, you can always go, you know, lipophilic agent. Remember we talked about before uh, the lipophilic agents, which have like, um, I mean, more. Um, does not penetrate well into the tissues, right? Which one they are, like pravastatin, fluvastatin, pitavastatin, okay? And then the same thing, if there is like a SAM score of CI 9 to 11, uh, most likely this is the cause. You stop and wait for the symptom resolution, re-challenge with the same dose or decreased dose, or you can decrease, or you can go with this lipophilic agent. Okay, now let's look at the statin with the good safety profile. Three, you have to remember. Pravastatin, fluvastatin, pitavastatin have a good safety profile. So if you have to uh, prescribe a statin or you're taking one, these are probably like a good one, doesn't cause that much uh, problems. Okay, the question, should I measure CK level before starting therapy? Uh, current recommendation is you don't have to go and do CK on every patient, okay? 
only the people at high risk. Let's say if you have advanced age, you have female, diabetes, kidney and liver disease, untreated hypothyroidism, always check a CK level before, um, before you start the statin therapy. Should I supplement vitamin D if I'm taking statin? You always check the vitamin D level. If the vitamin D level uh, is low, it's a good idea um, to, you, to replace vitamin D. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe our channel. Um, it will help us to produce more content like this. Again, thank you.